be the glory. The Bible is a book by God, about God, and the relationship He wants to have with you. In this particular session of Spotlight on the Word, a general introduction to the Bible, an overview of what God's Word is really all about, we're going to be studying the great book of Proverbs in the Old Testament. The book of Proverbs. And when you think about the book of Proverbs, it is a book concerning insight and skill in righteously applying the will of God to every area of our lives. Proverbs is about skill and insight in righteously applying the will of God in every area of our lives. If you were to look for a key word for the book of Proverbs, it would have to be wisdom. Wisdom. Because after all, the book of Proverbs is an inspired collection of the wisdom of all the ages, put together mainly by Solomon himself. Now to really appreciate the book of Proverbs, some background is required. And let's look at four or five passages that will prove helpful in giving some background to the book of Proverbs itself. When we think about Proverbs, first of all, 1 Kings chapter 3, 13 and following. When you look at 1 Kings chapter 3, you'll find out that Solomon had asked God for wisdom. God had asked Solomon, what gift can I give you? I, I have noticed your godliness. What gift can I give you as you serve as king? And Solomon asked for wisdom. So 1 Kings chapter 3 is an important passage to consider as background to the book of Proverbs. But secondly, go one chapter over to 1 Kings chapter 4. And beginning at verse 29, it talks about how Solomon was more wise than anyone in the world. And it says that Solomon wrote 3,000 proverbs and 1,005 songs. Stop and think about that for a minute. 3,000 proverbs and 1,005 songs. That passage gives us a lot of necessary background to the book of Proverbs itself. But as we continue, consider Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 9. There, the preacher, whom I believe to be Solomon in this case, indicates that he spent a great amount of time studying, weighing, and arranging many proverbs. That is Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 9. That would certainly fit well with what we know about the collection of proverbs found in this particular book. But as we go on, one can consider Jeremiah 18 and verse 18 as some background for the book of Proverbs. Because you see, when it concerned the law, one might see a priest. When it concerned the word, one might see a prophet. But when it concerned counsel, one needed to see a wise man. And what the book of Proverbs masterfully does is give us the distilled essence of the wisdom of the ages in this inspired collection that made its way into the pages of inspiration. So as we think about this, there's another passage that we might need to give some thought to by way of background in approaching the book of Proverbs. And that passage is 1 Kings chapter 11, 1 Kings 11, verses 1 through 11. What happens in 1 Kings 11, 1 through 11 is significant. It tells us that as Solomon grew older, he loved many foreign women and that they led him into idolatry. They led him astray. And the kingdom would eventually be divided 
according to 1 Kings 11, because of some of the choices that Solomon had made. And the point that I want to get across as we introduce this great book, the book of Proverbs, is this. Solomon is a great teacher, but in some ways a very poor example. He is a great teacher because he had such wisdom, but he is not a great example in some areas of his life. Jesus is the embodiment of real wisdom. Colossians 2 and verse 3. Jesus is the one in whom we will find a real sense of completion. Colossians 2, 9 and 10. Because in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So in the words of Matthew 17, 5, we need to hear him, hear Jesus. Now when we look at the book of Proverbs... Several verses come to mind that might well serve as key verses for the book. One is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. What a great verse to remember concerning Proverbs. Another important verse in Proverbs would be Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. Proverbs 4 verse 7. In that passage, the Word of God says, Get wisdom by all means. Get insight. These two passages help us appreciate the gist, the overall tone of the book of Proverbs. Consider also Proverbs chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. If you cry out for discernment, if you lift up your voice for understanding, for insight, if you seek for her as for silver, if you search for her as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. That was Proverbs 2, verses 3 through 5 again. As we think about the book of Proverbs, the key word is wisdom. These serve as some key verses. It is interesting to note that there are some 31 chapters that make up the book of Proverbs. That means that we can read a proverb a day for a month and basically read the book of Proverbs in its entirety. That would be so beneficial to anyone who wanted to get wisdom to gain insight, to know how to apply with skill and insight principles that will help them be more righteous before God because we respect Him and His ways. Let me give you an outline of the book of Proverbs. A short outline of the book of Proverbs. There are few books of the Bible that state the purpose and the theme any more clearly than does the book of Proverbs. And in Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 7, we have the author, the theme, and the purpose. The purpose, again, concerning uh, wisdom and its practical application with skill and insight to every area of one's life. The Proverbs of Solomon, the author. As you keep reading Proverbs chapter 1, Beginning at verse 8 and going all the way through chapter 9, there are proverbs to youth, proverbs to young people. You'll repeatedly see reference made to my son or to young man in this section of the book of Proverbs. And it is very, very beneficial to anyone who wants to gain greater wisdom as a young person to look at the book of Proverbs, and especially Proverbs 1 and verse 8 through Proverbs chapter 9. Then in Proverbs chapter 10, and going through chapter 24, Proverbs chapters 10 through 24, we have the first collection of Solomon's Proverbs. The first collection of Solomon's Proverbs. 
In chapters 25 through 29, there is a second collection of Solomon's Proverbs. This one made by Hezekiah's men, the text says, at the beginning of chapter 25. In chapter 30, there are the words of Agur, the words of Agur, A-G-U-R, in most of our translations. And in chapter 31, the words of King Lemuel. And in Proverbs chapter 31, there is a marvelous tribute to the worthy woman, the great wife, that is spoken of in that passage. Proverbs 31 serves as an acrostic. And by that I mean there are 22 verses and there were 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And each verse begins with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet serving as a memory help, as a memory aid so they could think about the type of woman God wanted them to have in their lives. Well, the book of Proverbs then is so important because it relates to skill and insight, living righteously, respecting God and His ways in every area of our lives. What I'd like to do is to look at seven great themes of Proverbs. Virtually all the Proverbs that are found in the 31 chapters that make up the book can be placed in one or more of these categories. Seven great themes of Proverbs. And we're going to study this and then bring in passages from elsewhere in the Word of God to show just how pertinent and practical and relevant God's Word always is to our lives. The Old Testament dealing with wisdom here in the book of Proverbs, Jesus, the embodiment of true wisdom, the one that we should follow. The first theme that I'd like for us to emphasize is this, that of foolishness and wisdom. That of foolishness and wisdom. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 26 that one who trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who trusts in the Lord will be delivered. Think about that. The Bible has a lot to say in the book of Proverbs in particular contrasting wisdom and foolishness. Wisdom and foolishness. And when we look at the rest of God's Word, remember how the Lord brought the Sermon on the Mount to a conclusion? He spoke of the wise and foolish builders. Matthew 7, verses 24 through 27. A wise builder will hear the sayings of the Lord and build properly thereon. That way, when the difficulties of life come, the winds, the storms of life, the foundation is sure, the house stands firm. But a foolish man will hear the teachings of Jesus, will build one's life, but not upon those teachings. And when the storms and the winds come, the house will fall. And really, the Sermon on the Mount ends with these words, and great was the fall thereof. Oh, such foolishness. The book of Proverbs boldly contrasts wisdom, God's wisdom, with foolishness. In the book of James, we are told to be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. James 1 and verse 22. But you know, as we continue to study the book of Proverbs, there's a second theme I'd like for us to think about together. And that theme has to do with laziness and industry, laziness and productivity, laziness and energy in doing one's work. Oftentimes, the Bible speaks of a lazy person in the book of Proverbs, sometimes using the expression sluggard or being slothful. And when you look at God's word in Proverbs 6 and verse 9, lazy people, slothful people, love to sleep. I think anyone can enjoy a good night's sleep, but there is such a thing as loving sleep so much that we become unproductive, we become lazy, we become slothful. 
When you think about lazy people, they are quick to make excuses. Proverbs chapter 22, verses 13 and 14. They're quick to make excuses. There is a lion in the road. That's what one says in that passage, who's lazy. They can find all kinds of excuses to not do what they need to be doing. But you, when you think about a lazy person, a slothful person, a sluggard in the light of Scripture, in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 4, we're reminded of how they miss out on opportunity. The lazy fails to plow in the fall. And when harvest comes, they look about, and there is nothing to glean. There's nothing to take in. They have missed a valuable opportunity. The Word of God constantly reminds us about the importance of using our time. We are told to number our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. Psalm 90, verses 10 through 12. Help me to remember how short my time is. Psalm 89 and verse 41. Man born of woman is but a few days and full of trouble. Job 14 and verse 1. The Bible talks about being industrious, industrious, about being energetic, about being active in doing our work. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10, to work heartily as unto the Lord. Colossians 3 23, doing the will of the Lord from the heart. Ephesians 6 and verse 6. The book of Proverbs and all of God's word warns against laziness and slothfulness and it extols the goodness of doing our work, of working. It is not a dirty word, a bad thing to emphasize proper productivity, activity, and especially in the things of God. But as we continue in the book of Proverbs, here's a third great theme about, what much is found, about which much is found. When we look at the book of Proverbs, we'll see that there's a great deal said about marriage and family. Marriage and family. In Proverbs 18 and verse 22, whoever finds a wife finds a good thing. In Proverbs chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, similar things are said. As well as Proverbs chapter 5, verses 18 through 20, Solomon, although he ended up loving many foreign women, saw the wisdom of one woman and one man in marriage for life. It's a lesson that he had learned, and he had learned the hard way as his life went on. Think about that. As we look at the book of Proverbs, there's this emphasis upon family, upon the home. Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4. By wisdom a house is built. By understanding it is established. By knowledge its rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. It is not simply what we have in our house that makes it a home. It's whom. Who we have in our house does make it a home. And yet at the same time, there is something to be said for what is present in our homes. Understanding, knowledge, love, kindness, forgiveness. Are these qualities seen in your house and in mine, in your marriage and in mine? In 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 15 through 18, a practical question is asked by Isaiah to Hezekiah that has ramifications, implications for all time. The idea is this. What have they seen in your house? What has your family seen in your house? What have neighbors seen in your house? Most of all, what has God seen in your house and mine. As we look at the book of Proverbs, then a great deal of information, wise information, is to be found concerning one's marriage and family and protecting that and it being God honoring. Remember, the book has to do with the application of wisdom and insight with great righteousness in every area of our lives. Yet again, 
When we look at the book of Proverbs, here is another theme that's closely associated with this book. It has to do with friendship. Friendship. In Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12, the word of God indicates that a friend, a real friend, will forgive. A real friend will forgive their friend. When you look at Proverbs 14 and verse 21, a true friend is selfless. Selfless. In a world full of selfishness, and it's all about me, the writer of Proverbs reminds us the real wisdom of having friends that are selfless. In Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17, a true friend loves at all times. You can go to Proverbs chapter 27 and a number of other attributes of a real friend are mentioned. Like a real friend will tell you the truth. A real friend won't lie to you. A real friend won't cover things up. A real friend will be truthful. Yet again, a real friend will not forsake you when you truly are in need. A real friend won't forsake you when you have a true, legitimate need. And then in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 27, iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. What happens is this, a real friend sharpens us spiritually. They help us to draw nearer to God. Check that out in Proverbs chapter 27 and what it says about real friendship. And consider the fact that as we look to the New Testament, it is Jesus who says, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John chapter 15. And how in Romans chapter 5, it is not for friends that Jesus dies, but for sinners and enemies when we were without strength and without hope. Romans 5 verses 1 through 11. What a friend we have in Jesus. Let us not forsake him. He is always true with us. He's there. Let us be the friend of the Lord. As we keep looking at the book of Proverbs, yet another theme that continues, that so many verses relate to in the book of Proverbs is our speech, our words. Our speech and our words. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. Proverbs 10 verse 19 Proverbs 18 verse 21 indicate death and life are in the power of the tongue. Think about that. Think about how the fact that many would say sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. We know that speech can hurt. It can build up or it can tear down. And when you look at the book of Proverbs, there is this profound, magnificent emphasis on the power of speech, the power of words. Let your words be few, Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 2. By your words you will be justified, by your words you will be condemned. We will all give an account to God for every idle word that we have spoken. Matthew 12, verses 34 through 37. Oh, be careful of the words you say and keep them soft and sweet. You never know from day to day which words you'll have to eat. Oh, to have the ability to use our words in a wise, insightful manner. If your lips you'd keep from slips, five things observe with care, of whom you speak, to whom you speak, and how and when and where. Here is another great theme of the book of Proverbs, and if you're following along, this is number six. It deals with stewardship and money. The book of Proverbs has much to say about stewardship and money. And by stewardship, I mean the fact that God has entrusted us. 
with material goods, with time, with abilities, and that all of these are to be used to honor and glorify Him. Remember, keep in mind that the book of Proverbs is about skill and insight in righteously applying in every area of our lives God's will and God's way. God's will and His way should certainly be applied to our material goods, to our money, and to how we use our time and how we speak. You look at this and it is just a concept that is saturated. It is found throughout the book of Proverbs. We are stewards. If a man be a steward, he must first be found faithful, trustworthy. So says 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. As it concerns giving, are we generous givers to things that are truly good causes? 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 and 7. Yes, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, Psalm 24 and verse 1. And yet we are to give on the first day of the week as we have been prospered. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2. As it concerns material things and our time, we are stewards. We are managers because God has placed in our care, in our trust, in our stewardship, all of these blessings and gifts. Matthew 6 and verse 33 is especially important here. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12, Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. A lot of so-called Christians are suffering from a terrible disease. It's a spiritual disease, not a physical one, and it could well be called cirrhosis of the giver. There is a lack of generosity and understanding the great stewardship that God has placed in our care. Let us be generous and gracious because we serve a God who is generous and gracious. But lastly, a seventh great theme in the book of Proverbs is that of death and life. Remember Proverbs 18 verse 21? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 14, 12. Proverbs 16 and verse 25. And this is a book that deals with getting wisdom. And in all you're getting, get insight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. Think about the message of the book of Proverbs and think about Jesus, the embodiment of true wisdom, Colossians 3. Think about Jesus because He is the way, the truth, and the life, John 14 and verse 6. Without Jesus, we can't go anywhere. We can't know anything and there is no living in any real way. 